What's going on there, guys? Good morning. It is the Earthmaster here early, bright and early on this Saturday morning, October 2nd, 2021, about uh, 824 a.m. California time. And looking at the uh, latest quake on the globe, it's going to be a 2.5 in the Gulf of Alaska region, quite active overnight, including that 7.3 earthquake that struck near the uh, Vanu uh, Vanuatu area. Let's spit that out. Haven't had too much caffeine this morning. Also looking at uh, some aftershock sequences on the globe that's uh, relatively deep as well. That 7.3 struck uh, right around 535 kilometers below the surface. Let's go ahead and check out the other map here so we can give a little bit more detail uh, info. There is that 7.3, 535 kilometers, folks. A major deep earthquake activity. Uh, this area, of course, prone to deep movement, but in the larger size, larger magnitude like this, um, th that tends to trigger stuff. Looks like we have seen some aftershock activity um, ranging even deeper within the region. A 4.3 struck, uh, looks like a, an hour or so after the main 7.3, uh, 561 kilometers. That is some crazy movement crazy deep earthquake activity in this region. We have not seen any adjustment up here to the northwest yet. Um, I do expect that to change. We did see, though, some even further deep movement over here on this side of the world, right? Isn't it amazing how one section of the plate can affect, well, a completely different plate thousands of miles away? It's all like a, a giant eggshell that's cracked and kind of moving around on some, uh, some liquid. In this case, uh, lava or, well, melted material. Let's just say that. 5.9 around the Brazil region. Check out the depth for that earthquake. 589 kilometers. <clears throat> That's deep. Into the, uh, looks like into the Peru Chile Trench region. So we need to be, uh, kind of be on guard in this region there. We have seen over the last week some movement into this area relatively deep, but this here is by far the deepest earthquake uh, so far in this region in quite some time. Uh, the west coast appears to be leveling off a little bit following this deeper movement over the last uh, 12 hours or so. Uh, most of this earthquake activity off the coast of Oregon up there around the Cascadia is some older quakes. Uh, let's look at the activity around the Bay Area where we're kind of monitoring some movement around the Hayward fault system. Haven't seen any further movement there, although a little bit of activity around the San Jose area on the Calaveras fault zone and also some movement down on the creeping section as well. Uh, no swarming, no heightened earthquake activity to report, although kind of looking at this here around the Lake Tahoe area, um, right smack dab in this region where we have seen in the past some uh, swarming Right now, only a small little microquake within the last hour, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that area uh, as well. Into the Yellowstone area, let's go ahead and check that out real quick on the Yellowstone map. You can see the earthquake activity uh, kind of dropping off a little following that 7.3. This here is the 7.3 that struck uh, last night in the uh, uh, Vanuatu region. This here is the 5.9 that struck down there in South America. So uh, you can see the uh, signature pretty significantly on this state on this station. Uh, but since then, prior to that 7.3, we had seen a, a little swarming activity going on at Yellowstone National Park, but it has magically dropped off. Uh, I, I, in this case, I think uh, we're leaving a little bit of pressure out here along the West Coast. We'll see how long that lasts. Um, even though Yellowstone's well inland, uh, the West no the North American Plate, Pacific Plate interaction um, affects Yellowstone and the inland areas greatly. No earthquake activity. Maybe a couple very tiny, small earthquakes there, but I mean, those are super duper small compared to what we had seen prior to the 7.3. Um, and some interference on Little West Thumb, Lake Butte. Those are not earthquakes. Those red lines are not earthquakes whatsoever. Uh, looks like some dwindling activity in Yellowstone. There's an, another view of the 7.3 and the uh, 
Uh, let's check out the uh, rest of the states here and uh, some movement uh, around the Appalachian Mountains over here. A little microquake 2.4 near Dandridge, Tennessee. And some activity in the Oklahoma area. Pecos, Texas and Midland area getting in on some earthquake activity while the new Madrid fault system remains relatively quiet. Uh, there's that earthquake up in the Gulf of Alaska region. Looks like uh, into the subduction zone a little bit. Uh, 2.5 uh, well south of Anchorage, north of the uh, uh, subduction zo zone right here. Uh, let's see what else we got. The Big Island, Kilauea. Earthquake activity diminishing around the Kilauea crater area. Regional movement in the southeast area of the Big Island, uh, continuous. And uh, looks like an average day of earthquake activity there so far. But uh, still kind of watching this. I mean, it's been it's been so quiet, folks. I mean, it's just eerie, very eerie up here in the uh, Japan region. Let's see what else we got here. South Sandwich Islands, well down south here. This was uh, this was yesterday, I believe. Yes, way yesterday. 5.3. Haven't seen any uptick in earthquake activity out there uh, since that 7.3. So we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of see what happens here, folks. It's just kind of a, a watch and wait type scenario at the moment. Either way, some deep earthquake activity really ramping up over the last 12 hours. So be on guard. The tremor from last night was pretty significant once again along the Cascadia subduction zone. You can see all these tremors up and down the Cascadia. Uh, this area to the south here in Northern California has seen quite the earthquake activity uh, recently. Uh, let's see if I can bring this back the last two weeks or so. Show you guys a massive amount of trimmer that has uh, really kicked up here. And uh, it's still continuing. I'm kind of curious to see what it's, what it's going to look like today. Uh, following that uh, 7.3 deep movement and also the deep activity down south in South America. If that, uh, I think it, I think, we'll see um, if that relieved any pressure up here along the Cascadia, uh, reducing the subduction and the tremor activity. But yeah, look at that, look at that number up there. Almost 5,000 epicenters since the 20th of uh, September. So about two weeks, right? Two weeks of earthquake or uh, tremor activity. That's quite the number, and most of it confined down here to Northern California. Uh, see what we got here in the solar weather department. Uh, things looking pretty minimal at the moment. Uh, looks like solar flare threat diminishing. Uh, geomagnetic uh, forecast a three-day looks pretty minimal. In fact, looking further out there, looks even. Uh, even quieter with a 10% chance here on the 4th of October. Sunspot activity on the Earth side diminishing. Coronal hole up here to the north, a little one. Earth facing and this other one here kind of turning towards us as well. Over here to the west, or at least to the left side of the screen, um, see some sunspots kind of on the horizon. We'll have to keep an eye on that, uh, see what comes uh, towards the... <coughs> towards the earth side right now we got 2880 but the dynamics dynamics of this thing just does not look super great uh, when it comes to producing any type of significant flare um <clears throat> all right guys have a good weekend uh got a pretty bit busy weekend myself here just gonna hang out uh and uh make it a great weekend we'll be out here off and on on the live stream but uh, also out and about you know kind of enjoying life and uh enjoying the little things in life like i think we all should so yeah hope everyone has a good weekend out there and definitely stay safe we'll chat you guys a little bit later uh this evening for an update video peace out guys